Welcome back to some more racing and um, we're going to be putting Melee back into action. So I'm here with Domi today. My name is Psycho. Welcome back to some more tier 3 action. Last week we had a week break so now we're finally back to more some more exciting race action. Hello Domi, how are you today? Yeah, hello guys. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to be back to be honest. I missed this. I missed racing. I missed, missed cars going out on track. I missed everything about commentating and, and racing obviously so um, I'm happy. And we already out with cars in France, so it's going to be for sure an exciting race. And I think uh, we can go through the track with Crampy, who is out first on the track, as he entering the 8-9 chicane and going towards down to turn 10. As uh, we are here in Manicur, France, uh, this track has 15 corners all in all, and we are lagging. I see yeah, this, like, well, yeah, this F1 game is kind of weird, dog. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so this is this is France. Uh, we have Crampy on his first uh, outlap, one of the first cars to be out here. And if, it can, if I can change my camera mode, that'd be pretty nice. But it won't allow me because Cody's. All right, here we are. Crampy starting out his first lap, going to turn one. This is a very fast track. This is a lot of long straights and a lot of tight corners to to go through. What do you think, Domi? Yeah, yeah, a stream is still lagging for me at least. I think everything is good no, now on my screen, fine. but it's yeah, yeah. A so yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it should be better now, I guess. Yeah, this is a very fast track. Uh, we have big, very long straights, so overtaking is going to be interesting and for sure easier than some other tracks. But as well, that's Crampy already invalidating his lap. Unfortunately, gonna have to go for that second banker lap. Uh, do you want to restart your game? Maybe that, that could help. Maybe that could help. Uh, give me one second, everyone, uh, while Domi brings us his legendary um, commentating. Radio of commentating. Course, of course. Okay. So, we have a lot of drivers already out. Some of them using our mediums, but um, I think uh, most of the people are going to use softs because. Uh, too big of a that between uh, softs and mediums here to get a good lap time in, I think. And so far, it can work really easily. And even who who is try hard and, and wanna save the stars, you can do soft medium as well. But I don't know about that. Uh, I tried both of the strategies. I think so hard went, went better for me. Yeah, yeah, the, the strategies are very, like, hard to distinct themselves. If you take the mediums, sure, it might be a little bit faster, but it is a lot more riskier with the tire wear. But the harder options, it does look like to be a more safer option for the drivers. Yeah, uh, David Antonio with the 130.0 uh, makes our first time of the day, and Rakati goes speed with the 130.0, but Rakati is on mediums. And Maka goes speedy on the mediums, 130.3. Ifun with a 130.0 as well, P2 on soft. Yeah, as, as I said, like... Sorry everyone, give me one second to quickly fix this issue that we have. I think everything should be sorted out now. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. It's okay, it's okay. Alright, looks like everything's in order now. Now we can get back into this brilliant racing. Yeah, as, as Clampy goes for another lap on those softs, but it's pretty interesting because... If you do two laps on socks, it's gonna kill the tire wear, and every lap on socks is counts, I think, because uh, I think you start around twelve percent if you do two laps and later, lap. and it's a lot here as tires easily overheat at the uh, the last sector, so it's going to be interesting for sure. So that's why most of the drivers out here are starting on uh, medium banker laps. As we have disaster not picking up the fastest lap of the race. Um, qualifying, you mean? Sorry, yeah, qualifying of this qualifying session we have here. It's 12 minutes on the clock. Crampy is about to finish his lap, I believe. He's getting a little bit blocked by Rocket here. Yeah, it looks like that, yeah. Yeah, but the toe, the toe is going to help, I think, right? Is that going it, to make a wasn't... difference, though? And it I does make a difference nice. as he does take pole, but of course, it is his banker lap. We're gonna see more faster times across the board, and his tires is, does have two laps on them, which is, if he doesn't set any more qualifying laps, that's definitely gonna affect him. And we have seen issues in the past with Crampy having well, some consistency issues. 
what do you expect us to be a Paul here? So we, time. So so far, uh, I believe to be honest, Crampy might take the pole here, as he's shown brilliant pace throughout this uh, throughout this whole season. So I think pole might be around a mid twenty eight to be honest, or a, or a high like twenty eight. Yeah, that's that's image. That's that can be other case. As we, I don't think we saw yesterday at twenty eight, or maybe one or two people. But yeah, I think one of the Red Bulls did a one twenty eight yesterday. So. If if you can manage to nail it, I think you you have a good chance to be in the top ten on those softs. Ooh. But so far, a lot of people not making times, and as we see, as we know in this in this and the last game as well, French this France French track is really easy to invalidate. Most in turn two, I would say, but the rest of the lap as well, maybe around uh, turn twelve as well, because when you go on the axis, you want to use as much exit curve. Of course, and yeah, as you say, it is easy to invalidate, and especially as well as turn one, one of the tricky corners of this track. If you miss that apex, you're definitely gonna lose some speeds. You're gonna have a, have a hard chance of spinning out your tires as well as also um, invalidating your lap. Can you put time zone, Psycho? I was wondering why there's no time. Uh, there we are. <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was just my eyes. No, okay, here we are. We have the times up here. So there's a ha one and a half tenth gap to P1 and P2 right now. Disaster looking good so far, but there's still a lot of time left in this session. Yeah, we are making comedy here, to be, fun to be fair. <laughs> of course. Yeah, the, a lot of people actually done medium laps, as I see. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, in so my opinion, because, because I think you want to save mediums yeah, yeah. here. So maybe them focusing on the tire wear aspect of this race, which is an important factor for this track, to be honest. Like, if you get a lot more safety car, you wanna do medium medium, I think. I'm not sure if hearts can go the descent, but medium medium is for sure faster, I think, here. Do you think we'll see a lot of safety cars in this race, Tommy? Well, it's France, so it shouldn't be the case because we have big uh, areas where you can go out. But you never know. At the first stop, when you have a lot of cars next to each other, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, everything can happen. Like it's it's tier three. I think it's one of the cleanest grids on on our MLR car, MRL races, but you never know. And we have seen that in the past, uh, especially Singapore. There was a lot of good overtakes, and it was definitely fun to watch uh, drivers struggling with the strategy, with the rain coming in the factor. But we're in a new track, new race. Uh, people are gonna have to take other things into factors. Uh, yes, and it was Paul with a 129.5. Eddie, who is recently joined our grid, has a good showing so far. He has strong pace every time he is racist here. Pairing so, up with Crampy, so he's gonna have some uh, shoes to fill if he wants to match his pace with uh, with Crampy right now, as he's looking really good to win the season. Yeah. As Cody in, in chat goes through, comes through, say as uh, he thinks hearts can go to the distance from lap one, but from lap three maybe. As Artex goes all with a 129.0, that's actually a really strong time to begin with. I think that was his first stop as well. Slowly getting closer, inch by inch, to that 28, uh, that that sub 29. So hopefully we get to see that coming soon. I think we'll see that coming soon, especially if. Uh, drivers are right now coming in for their laps, their second run. Yeah, and, and as you see, like, our bottom four didn't manage to set a lap time so far, I think because they are invalidated maybe. I'm not sure if they didn't run out at all, but... That's well, most right, likely the issue, I believe. It's, it's very easy to invalidate in some of these corners. Gabby Zoom has two invalidation after each, each lap, so... It's pretty easy to invalidate here, so drivers gotta watch out as Maka goes P2 with the 129.2 on the softs as the Mercedes driver switches to softs, so I think we're gonna see 28 in any time soon now as this driver just banging on that door. Yeah, we're definitely gonna see that. Crampy gonna start his lap soon. Have all these laps, all these drivers in their out lap. We have Yasko unfortunately on his outlap as well as invalidating his lap. He's going slowly in the front line. I don't know what he's doing he's, there. Maybe he's, like maybe he's run out of chill. But yeah, maybe that. You have Crampy starting his lap right now. 
looking good through turn one, nearly invalidating, but everything looks good so far for Crampy. Let's take a look with his lap right now. Going to turn four, going smooth in the apex. Make sure you're going uh, to carry much speed as you can. Let's use see. those curves. Definitely use those curves to gain much advantage. Going purple sector one. Careful not to spin out here. Then we have the long, nice straight with the DRS. This is uh, this long straight has many possible overtake opportunities for these drivers here. I think we're gonna see the most of the overtakes here. It's gonna be a rise of the eight and nine chicane, but it's basically the best. And he invalidates on the exit of nine. It's pretty easy to do because you wanna use as much exit curve as you can to carry speed. And this is what I'm telling you, man. It's too easy to invalidate, especially on those curves over there. You just make one centimeter off the apex and you're gone. And Wisp and Dark improved as well. They are V3 and 4. Wow, this wheel is super close at the moment. I don't know why my, my telemetry or my, my details keeps switching off the lap times, but yeah, it looks like it's... um. Looks like it's getting closer and closer by the by the time by the second runs are finished. I can't wait for what pole time is gonna be. Yeah, well, uh, and we are still three drivers who didn't set the lap time. So, and one of them is Jean, who, who in the last two races shown pretty good performance as well. As Carbon Racer goes one in twenty nine point zero pole position, Carbon Racer showing again that that he's a driver to to watch out for for sure so close to that 28 it's inches away as soon as we hit that then it's going to be a lot more competitive within this field yeah two hundreds between artex and carbon racer wow that's pretty close guys, that's that, pretty close uh, <laughs> yeah yeah as jean is on lap i think yeah he's on lap at the moment is he entering the final sector as he still didn't need molly day now he just gotta finish this sub so he has a tie on board there is four minute thirty left in this uh, in this qualifying session, so quickly wrap up the lap, come back in for this third run. Let's see what lap time he's coming through. Going to that finishing straight. It's a long straight. That check the 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 start line is pretty far back, but he sets a twenty nine point one and sets himself P three. Good luck from Gian. Yeah, yeah. Hello, my Jean. And we have three different teams in the top three, but it's it's pretty good. But uh, as you've seen before, the Merc boys are usually work together pretty well and they are 1 4, so they can force something on Artex or Sean even if they want to. So it's something to watch out for sure. And we've seen Carbo Racer, he, we, he shows that he has the pace, especially to, to go against Crampy, and Crampy just needs to set on that lap time to put himself in front. So he needs that consistency. Jose Manuel goes P8 and Edu is on lap as well i think this this is from ed this is his last attempt because uh i don't think he has more time to go back to the pits or if he maybe just go in now he, break, he double shift he is two tenths up on his lap right now so he is looking pretty good but it looks like he's slowly navigating through those corners so he might have to come in it'll be smart if he comes in right now no he stayed out as he's finishing his lap that's going to be interesting to see where he comes through and if he will have enough time to set another run. I don't think he will have enough time to set another run. As he and he goes P3. P3. Respectable wow. lap time from uh, Idu, but will he have enough lap, uh, enough time to come back into the pits for his third run to go an even faster lap? Or is he happy with this lap he has right now? I don't think he has time to come back and he's going to he's, he's have to stay out and just take this time. I believe, Artex is, uh, I believe Artex is in a lap right now, I'm gonna finish a lap soon. Navigating through those corners. Um, Last time he was down by a hundred on his time, so it's not looking too good for him. No, he's going, into, going the into the pits. Maybe he wasn't happy with his lap time. His lap. That's gonna be important for him, navigating through turn one. Getting in nicely cleanly. Nice stuff from Crampy right now, navigating through Sector 1 cleanly. Let's see if I can do it carrying the speed throughout those corners. Locks up so a little bit. Baby. You can hear those noises, but it's still looking really good. Very smooth on the throw run now. Don't want to spin out the car. And he's three tenths up. Wow. He's, if he can finish this lap, if he can keep this tidy throughout the race, he's looking for a respectable, respectable time right here. 
But this is where he's invalidated, so he's going to be very careful in what he does right now. Yeah, I think he's going to look out for that exit curve to not use too much, but I think he just wants to send this lap because this is his last attempt and he wants that ball because, you know, it's always better to be at top. But it was nice so far, he didn't invalidate, and he's four tenths up now. That would be enough for P4, I think, at the moment. Or maybe P5. But the last sector is coming, but what's, I think you can gain the most time if you put it together correctly. And so far he's not made any mistakes, so we'll see. It's keeping it nice and tidy throughout the whole lap, it's looking really good for him. If he can gain Ooh. all of his time through the last sectors, then he's looking to probably be on pole. I won't be surprised if he does. Yeah, I wouldn't be either. As he's entering the final corner, and now he's giving everything to get that acceleration, putting down the DRS. And now we just wait to get to the line. It's the longest straight, I think, to the line. And he goes pole with a 128.8. What a lot by Crampy. Almost a second. He improved by 8. 8 point. Wow. Mm. So 8 tenths. Let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> Almost 9 tenths. First driver to come onto the 28th. Respectable lap time from Crampy. That's going to be a hard lap time to beat for any of these drivers here looking to, uh, to knock it out into pole. You have Carbon starting his lap right now as well. He's one of the one of the drivers to look at if he to to be on top of that leaderboard right now. As we have EDU retiring for the session, he didn't have enough time uh, to probably come for his third one. Artex is still. I don't think Artex. Yeah, Artex is not gonna make a lap. Yep, as he's done right now. Most of these drivers done with the quali. Now that Crampy, Crampy also has time to come back into the pit, so I mean, he can take it nice and slow. And well, look at the Mercedes boys, Maka giving toe to Oh, wow. Race, uh, look at this. From that boys. Look at that slit stream, that team were coming to the play. I like what I'm seeing right now. As I said, Merc always works together really good, so we see how much this is going to make for Carbon Racer. But Super is so far tied up and he needs to gain two tenths on Crampy to, to get that pole position, so... He's two tenths up right now on his time, so if he can keep that gap throughout right now, he might take pole right now if he can uh, do better on his last sector. Yeah, but this is, this is the hardest, so you can you can make easy mistakes here. But he's so far kept it tidy. I don't want to jinx him, so I'm not going to say anything from now on. You want to do the commentator's okay. curse. He's going through the last sector, keeping everything nice and tidy. Let's see what the gap is when he's going through the last turn right now. Let's see if he can carry as much speed throughout that hairpin. Now full on to the throttle right now. DRS activated, nice and short to the line. Let's see where he can pull. It's going to be interesting if you see it gets pulled by 28.7. Let's go Mercedes, Carmen Racer with that nice teamwork with from Maka, taking that slip street and taking pull with a 28.7. What a lap from Carbon Racer. Not biased at all, our Mercedes Psycho driver. <laughs> <laughs> of course, but this yeah. is what I like to see. But what a lot by Carbon Racer and the teamwork just paid out at the end. I think that counted a lot, so... Yeah, I mean... Good job to Mercedes for the teamwork. And I think we have our, our grid set here because no one is on lap. Yeah, they just finished qualifying. And I didn't see who was in the top three, but it was... Uh, Carbon Racer, Crumpy, and Artex. Yes, and there we are. Here we have the grid, the two British drivers starting in the front. Mercedes of Carbon Racer and the Williams of Crampy starting in the front row. We have Artex of the Red Bull. And Wisp as well in the Alfa Romeo starting P4. Very good time for him. We have Dark in the P5. EDU, Crampy's teammate on P6. Gian, P7. Maka, and then second Mercedes C. Hoping he can help Carbon Racer throughout those times. Uh, Dave Antonio P9 and P10 for back row. We have P11 for Jose Manuel driving for Ferrari. Driver DMB P12, P13 Gabesium, P14 Max O'Connor, Disaster P15, Ufun 16, Yasko in the Afatari seat, Lovell McLaren and Rackety in the last driver in the last spot of the qualifying session. P19 driving for Haas. What a what an interesting qualifying session, I would have to say. Yeah, like we had to show that at the end between Williams and Mercedes here. And the Mercedes strategy working out the toe is just giving the edge to Mercedes here. But wow, I'm pretty close, pretty close here. And it seems pretty dark here. So we might even see Rim, but I'm not sure. Is do we have any race engineers in the chat who can tell tell us how is the weather looking for the race? I was about to comment on that. It's pretty dark skies and bon 
Probably Ricard circuits. Um, so tire temperatures might be cold, so formation lap, gonna have to warm up that quickly. But I was gonna say, um, so I've been talking through the Mercedes chat, and uh, they've been recently practicing on Slipstream, so their hard work definitely paid off during that qualifying session, as we can clearly see. So I'm proud of the Mercedes boys, but I'm also keen on what Crampy's gonna do. We've seen in the past how good his um, consistency is, but will it stick through throughout this race? I think he will try his best for sure because, as we've seen always, Crampy is is a force to contend with, like put up with because he is fast and he is consistent and he usually makes the good strategic choices. So I wouldn't be surprised if he go a nail biting battle to the end. So can we can you... see for the tires right now, we have P11, uh, have the mediums, but from P12 to P15 is on the hards. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, I would go mediums if I'm out of the top 10, but hards can work pretty well, because uh, mediums is gonna fall off when they hit the cliff, and hards don't have a cliff here, to be, to be honest. So, I don't know, I don't know which one is the better choice, but we're gonna see. It's interesting that... Going for uh, last place has medium tires as well, so that's gonna be interesting to see. As we see, the track is actually getting a little bit lighter as we're going throughout this formation lap. Yeah, it's it's getting sunnier and sunnier. Wow, I'm, I'm excited for this race time. I want to see who comes out on top in turn one because that's gonna give us a lot of information how the rest of the race is gonna look like. I think. Turn 1 for this race star, especially in this unique track. Turn 1 is going to be a sending spot, so drivers have to be careful with their breaking point because if they miss it, they could cause a lot of casualties and just mess up the race entirely. Yeah, the soft train is going to watch out as well, the, keep the temperatures in the last sector because you have time to cool it down in the mainstream, but you enter two very quick right handers and then a third one is going to overheat that, all those tires and it's going to be easy to spin. So you just gotta watch out, and uh, yeah, the rest of the grid is just try to stick to the soft runners, try to stay in that DRS chain as we always see in here, and you're going to be fine for sure. Yes, as we have now, the car is going to AI mode, lining up for the grid. All the back runners coming in now, hopefully their tires have warmed up nicely so they can get that nice launch. Now, drivers lining up. Back marker slowly getting through the grids. And this is definitely some goosebumps growing to my arm right now. Can't wait for the race. <laughs> Every one of us. Every one of us, I think. Alright, here we are. Everyone lined up for the grid right now. Don't me if you would like to take away for the race start. For sure, for sure. And uh, the lights are coming up. And we have five, four, four, five lights. And away we go. A scumbag racer gets a pretty good start. And Crampy as well. Everyone stay in formation. Carburation has a little bit of slip, but I think he keeps the position. And everyone is staying in formation, but Artax sending it on Crampy's inside, but Crampy defending it well. So far, so good. Ooh. And we have an Alpine spinning in the mid round, but I think everybody avoided him. Yeah, he lost a little bit of body work, but I think everyone else is fine mostly. Unfortunately for back row, was one of the top runners. Now he's in the back. Ah, oh, I think maybe if he may have clipped someone. I saw it uh, kind of spun out someone, but we're still going through the grid. The top eight, I believe, has followed through nicely. Not much position changes as we can see with our board. Let me quickly check. There's only been a couple. If yeah. one had a pretty big start from P16 to P12. So that's a good one and Rakati P3, uh, 3 position ends up in 16th place. And we have the big losers like second and back row. Obviously back row is spin, quite a spin. And driver DMB and Jose Manuel going side by side at the moment through turn 10. And it's almost ending in tears, but uh, they kept it fine at the moment. Going side by side. And Aston Martin's right behind them as well. See if he can get an opening there just to slip through those fights. Right now, just keeping it close right now in the train. Looks like uh, Carbon is uh, slowly, slowly getting a gap, but it's still looking really good for them. Yeah, as uh, driver, driver DMB, who is on hard, I think, at the best position from the hard runner at the moment, and he's battling a medium runner. So, as you see, there is not that big of a pace difference as Backroad dives into the pit lane to change that front wing. 
Yeah, not much. Everyone's keeping a nice close gap, but everything is looking good so far. We have some of the... We have uh, back row Master Connor pitting for those damages, unfortunate. They're probably going to pit for mediums or hards. See if they can, can get a safety car, hopefully. Yes. You never know. This That's lap is still... This race has just started. That's out. Top 5 is really close together. I think everyone is waiting for DRS to come, that sign. But David Antonio is already out of the DRS sign, so it's not good for him. He, he has to push back, so he don't lose DRS to the others, because he's going to hurt his race. Because on this track, as you know, the, the main straight and the DRS can give you a lot of time. And DRS as well, so... And Jose Manuel is slowly catching up to him. And he is a medium runner, so he's looking up to to get up those positions so he can fit nice with his strategy. Yeah, as Edu is under two times to Wisp, he's really eyeing up that Alfa Romeo at the moment. But Wisp is holding well at the moment. And he goes wide a little bit. And I think Edu is going to try to undercut him a little bit on the last corner, but he didn't get the exit, unfortunately. But he's really close and Wisp is a little bit shaking under pressure, so we'll see how we see. Yeah, we just wait until the DRS opens, then we're going to start seeing the overtakes, and then we're going to see the gaps getting closer and closer. The DRS is definitely going to be an important factor, thanks to those long DRS rates. Campy goes fastest from anyone else in the 133.5. That's a good indicator to see that he's at the moment the fastest on the track, so we have to watch out for him, obviously, the pace. As uh, Edwin and Dark is really close to each other as well, under two tons. And we have a spinner, I think that's level, unfortunately. Yeah, he had a spin on those hearts. Oh, no. Yeah, it looked like he spun from turn one, one of those corners that uh, preys on you hitting the apex. If you don't hit that, you're definitely going to run off a little bit and definitely going to lose a lot of time. As we have seen, Crampy might go for the move here. He was really close to Carvin, but keeps it safe. He says, you know what, I'm going to stick it through, wait for next lap, and then maybe I'll go for the overtake. But looks like Crampy is... Starting to uh, get a little aggressive with Carbon. Yeah, I think Ramp is trying to force Carbon into using his battery. But at the moment, Carbon has actually more battery than Ramp is, so it didn't really work out so far. But they are really, really close. As Attack has the, actually the last of these three runners. It's pretty interesting. But Ramp is just pressuring Carbon. But Ramp goes a little bit wide on turn 12, so that opens up a little bit for Artex, so he's who is going to try to make a move. Well, we have side by side with David, uh, David and Jose Manuel, McLaren and Ferrari. Is David going to stick in front or is... Yeah, looks like he is. Nice overtake from David. Or is he going to get side by side still? DRS activated for the Ferrari. Not going to utilize much of that battery, but is he going to go ahead of him? Yeah, I think he does. Want an overtake by Jose Manuel because... And that medium tire is already starting to work better. That would be interesting, actually. Yeah, it looks like but, the medium runners are already starting to go a bit faster than the soft runners, but there's still still some laps left until the softs have to pit around like lap 7 or lap 10, that is. Yeah, for sure. I think Maka is maybe going for a move because he's using a lot of butter behind Dark, but I don't think he's close enough as he stopped using his battery. We have the first penalty can... of the day with uh, Lovell again, a 3 second penalty. Yeah, this, this trick is not necessarily good for pad because of the first couple of corners. You can lose a lot of time there, and as you know, Lavalle is a pad driver, or at least, as I know. And Ooh. does a stat have a spin? I think he came together with Rocket a little bit. Does he have any damage on the car? It doesn't look like that, so he's lucky to scrape off from just a spin. But that's definitely going to affect his race, unfortunately. There's a tight gap right now with Crampy and Carbon. Crampy but... is pushing Carbon around the track now. He's really pushing him, but I don't think Krampy wants to overtake because if you think about it, at this point it's n not really a good opportunity to overtake because he's just gonna get you back in the last half. And Ed diving into the pits for probably hearts because two stopping from here would be not a good idea in my opinion. So you're gonna go for those hearts and he's going to try to undercut. Yeah, looks like he's gonna he's gonna go for the undercuts. My spectator thing keeps changing for some reason, so here you are with the tire data, he's pitting through the medium tires. Oh wow, that's that's an aggressive two-stop. That's interesting. That's I've probably going to be a two-stop, but I would have never yeah. guessed him pitting for mediums this early. 
Yeah, because I think you can make hearts from here and you can make sh actually try to undercut. And I think Kemp is going for an overtake now. Yeah, he's using his battery. He's closing the gap down and it's going to be a pretty easy overtake on Carburetor. Carburetor, nothing he can do. He just pulls through. It's almost Artex. Artex is going side by side with Carbon Racer, almost he gets it as well. He's, he's gonna get a better to... exit, they're still going side by side. Oh, and he does get go... They're still going side by side, but Artex is slightly in front. We have Wisp with the, the front seat actions of this battle. But is he gonna and leave him have... some space for it? He did, he did. But they have to watch out because Krampy almost out of the second already from Artex. And he pulled out of the second. This fighting is really costing the both of them. Krampy is go gonna try to run away with it now. As they're still going side, but what a battle for P2, and Artex just goes through. But they lost DRS in that fighting, and, and that's really not good for them. No, no, it's definitely not, but the positions are there. Wisp is slowly, slowly looking for an opening to maybe see if they can get uh, any sort of position gain. DRS is still activated for these uh, two drivers instead of Artex not getting a DRS. Is Carbon gonna go? He's not using his, uh, his battery, but he is still getting faster. I think he don't want to fight Artex, because... It's not the best time to fight, as Dark and David Antonio dives into the pit lane. I think they're going to go for that hard. Yeah, David Antonio is on hard. And Dark is on mediums as well. Oh, interesting tire choice for, for the mediums on us, at least in my opinion. That's but, very interesting, yeah. If Krampy can keep this gap, and he can maybe try to run away, that's going to really hurt the other's race. And Krampy has more battery than Artex as well, so... It's the yeah, exactly. What, um, it looks know. like uh, Crampy is keeping the gap steady, but these drivers are fighting for the P2 position f uh, for now. Uh, but the gap is slowly getting slower, closer and closer to the DRS range. Artex with only 20% of ERS oh, wow. left. Carbon Racer almost spinning. They're really pushing mm. hard. They really are pushing. Maka has caught up to the front pack right now, to the battle, thanks to the battle slowing everyone down. But these three drivers right now are so close, they just never know you slip up once and you just... Oh, a carbon spun! Oh no, that tire is overheated and he lost it. Oh, he wow. pushed too much and this is what you get. Oh, that's so unfortunate with carbon. This is almost what happened with... Pit, yeah, this is most likely going to be an opportunity for him to pit. This is what happened in Singapore. If you push too much, you're going to slip up. You have to be consistent, especially in this track. Yeah, on every track, honestly. But as Jean dives into the pit as well, this could be but, seen as a uh, a move for him to go into the pits. But ah, uh, this is not unfortunate. It's kind of for it's medium. Am I in the wrong, or I don't think mediums can make it to the end from here? Or can someone correct me on that in chat? But I'm, I don't think mediums can go to the distance from here. I I, I honestly agree with you. I feel like that's gonna be a definitely a risky move. I don't think that's a, a wise decision to take. I feel like the smart decision to go on hard to kind of play safe a little bit because uh, the pace advantage for these two tires isn't that much to be honest. And Krampy is eyeing up a move, uh, not Krampy, Wisp eyeing up a move on Artax as he sees Artax is blinking on his battery. And then, oh, the last, okay. So we have information that we didn't know. Last five to ten minutes is going to be rain. So it's understandable that they are going. Oh. oh. That's why and most of these uh, drivers went on hards, isn't it? Mediums, yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. As uh, Wisp and Artex going side by side and they had a touch. Oh, they're and still Wisp banging also. wheels with each other. But Wisp turns out to be the victor of this, of this battle right here. I wouldn't be surprised to see Artex diving into the pit lane now. No, I wouldn't be surprised either. It would probably be a wise decision if it does. Wisp does go through the pits. I think maybe he cut a little bit the uh, <laughs> entry as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think we saw that a little bit from my cam. Um, but hopefully he doesn't get a penalty out of that because that will definitely affect it, his race. And I, then I don't understand why people went to mediums at the start because you can stretch those hearts to the end almost. Yeah, oh. that's it. Kind of confuses me. Yeah, and but honestly, when it says ten minutes, you never know. It might come in like five laps, or it might come in like you know ten laps or something. So, will those hards stretch out, or will those sorry, will those mediums stretch out until the rain comes? We'll have to see. Yeah, this is going to be interesting for sure. Disaster picking up a three-second penalty. We're starting to see the penalties coming slowly and slowly. 
No, I think no. uh, Jean and Vist are going to fight because Jean is really close and Vist doesn't have theirs from anybody else. And Vist is on the hard tires. Foon goes so for the overtake against Jose Manuel. So, that's. Uh, sorry to uh, cut you off there. Oh, no worries. Ifun is low on uh, ERS though, he's on 8% ERS, so Jose Manuel might get that position back, that P4 position back. That's Jose Manuel picks up a penalty. Oh, well, there's my curse going off. And Driver, DMB and Gabi Zoom is really close to each other as well. As Krampi pitting, Artex pitting, probably Maka as well. No, Maka stayed out, interesting choice. I'm not gonna say that for one more lap. He's probably gonna push all he can to this lap to probably get some sort of uh, overcut, maybe. But we'll have to see. Yeah, as, as the we have two hard runners in the top five at the moment, with Dyer D and Gabi, some they are looking really good for this race if the rain really comes. But they need it as soon as they can. they need it earlier than than they get catched by the other drivers who played already, like Ilu who is on P8. I think it would just undercut Crampy and Dark as well and Lovell Lovell retired in the, in the pits. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Edu actually we didn't notice that that Edu undercut a lot of people. He's not P1 from who pit it already. I and when we were like five minutes ago we were kinda criticizing him on why he pitted earlier, but now that we have the new information about the rain, that's a very smart move from Edu. Yeah, he just needs to stick it until the rain, and, and if he can manage it, then he had a pretty big gamble who got worked out. But he's already getting attacked by Dark, who overtakes him at uh, the 8-9 chicane. Yeah, and his driver and his uh, little teammate is right behind him with that 1.8 second gap, and there's no question about it, I slowly catch up with the newer tires. And I think Maka is just going to pull into the pit now. Yeah, he's fitting already. Yep. And As the last stop runner is coming into the pits, let's see if that overcut will actually work out for him. I don't think he will, but maybe might gain him some gap or some positions. We we'll have to see. I mean, new tire is really powerful here, so I don't think it will. But we have a three and four in behind Crampy already again. And that's that gap already getting closer and closer. We have now, right now, Maka exiting the pit lane. Looks like he is dropping a lot of positions. And even, might be even behind his teammate. No, it looks like gonna be in front of his teammate. So, yeah, it looks like that strategy didn't really work out for Maka. But, race is still not over. The rain is definitely gonna be an important factor for this race. If it's, <coughs> if it's gonna be heavy race, or if it's gonna be a little light drizzle. So, the, the, the softs or the, the mediums will like still work during this drizzle. As Ifun and Posimano like, keep switching positions, I mean they're having that fun at first and second position, but if they fight this hard, it's going to cost a lot of time to them. As Wisp and Artex exchanging positions. You have Dark right just... now as well as Exxon. Yeah, as you said, changing position right now. He also gets a 3 second penalty, unfortunately, from that uh, battle. And uh, Ifun and Posimano are still going side by side in the last sector. They are providing us plenty action today. And I think Dark is going to go side by side with Ido in the last sector, maybe. Maybe not, he's not close enough, okay? I thought so. See, the penalties are coming in now. They're, it's really a hard track to be consistent at, because it may look easy for some drivers, but the, the, the warning slowly does rise up, and it does give you that penalty. You can get easel, easily that three warnings that you need for that penalty. We have Dark right now, maybe eyeing up for an overtake. He's not utilizing his battery, but Edu is using that battery up. It doesn't and look Krampi like he's gonna Artex. for an overtake. Yeah, Krampi and Artex coming for those two. As Krampi goes a little bit wide in turn one. What's going to give the rest to Artex now? That really had the uh, young Spaniard to catch back to Krampi. Both of these drivers are low on ERS, Dark and Krampi. And Edu does have 50% ERS, even though without the DRS, I feel like Dark and Crampy are gonna easily just go by EDU, but we'll have to see how nicely he defends it. Might be an easy task. Let's go be some overtake side where they are mean to the 8 and chicken. 
going side by side now. Yeah, it's an easy pass for Dark right now. This yeah, Krampy, but I think Krampy is slowly getting together as well. And Dark and Rakety can maybe do a little bit of teamwork here, as Dark comes up to Rakety, and Dark already made a stop, so it wouldn't be smart to fight your own teammate who already made a stop. And Ido almost pushing Dark, who was already out of Eras deployment, so... Wow. Might be interesting if he can quickly overtake him again. He does have that DR uh, DRS and ERS advantage. The Crampy is right behind his tail as well. He's going side by side. He had a very nice exit out of that corner. And just easily and overtakes them. Wow. And I, I think Ido just didn't want it to fight his own teammate because he knows Crampy has four laps, younger tires, and no penalty. It wouldn't make sense to fight your own teammate here as well. That's true. And it's... he can let off Crampy to fight a dark and maybe make that uh, gap closer for him. And at the front, our hard runners started to gain time back on the medium runners because the gap was a couple of, like, so it's three seconds, and now Gabizum is almost behind Ifun. So, the hearts starting to come in play now, I think. Yeah, we can definitely see the hearts coming in now. Uh, we have Disaster, uh, the third hard runner in the field, seven seconds behind P4. But we can see that they're slowly catching up to the medium runners as Ifun and Jose Manuel are still battling out. And this is definitely going to catch them time and even more penalties if they keep fighting out like this. So somehow they need to keep that gap open so they don't lose much time to these hard runners. And Rakit losing two positions in a straight. I think he wanted to let his teammate go and he just... Oh, and the defense Idu now. Rakit is not looking good here. He's losing a lot of position on those mediums. But he has 11 laps of medium, so... And Jose Mane and Ifon still are going side by side. These two are just having their fun, I think, now. Yeah, they've honest. just been together throughout the whole race. They're like best friends right now. So They can stop being friends yeah. again. If, but if the rain comes out just imperfect for these drivers, they're looking really, really good. Maybe even holding position for these drivers like we saw last race in Singapore. The, the strategy played out perfectly for them. Yeah, and if you if you watch uh, the Hardeners, Dazaster, from Dazaster they have 7 seconds that they still need to catch. But it's not going to be an easy easy task because I'm not sure if, if the new hearts are that much better than the old hearts. They have a little bit of DSF and that not that much, I think. But it's still looking now, very sunny in France right now, so... Yeah. But you never know, this weather system can just quickly just switch up in one lap, so we'll have to see as Rackety... As Wisp actually overtakes Rackety. Yeah, and I think Jean is eyeing up a move as well on Rackety. Rackety is just falling back now, those tires are not the best, I think. Nothing he can do with this new medium, against these new mediums. I wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, sorry, what were you saying? I wouldn't be surprised if we see the chain come together again. This racket backs out of the move and Jean is probably tried oh, he taps racket in the back a little bit. As Maka is catching up as well and Carbon Racer as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we see as <laughs> Ifun and Jose Manuel just keep dancing together. This is closing and in the gap for Gibson to come through, as well as Rival DMB slowly catching up, so I need to stop playing this uh, this tug of war and exchanging and just get on with it. <coughs> I think to be fair to them, it's amazing that they did it 13 last and they didn't come together once and they kept it clean, so a big up for them to, to keep it clean and just just show us this nice racing as Ifun just goes through again in turn 1. Look at that space given. This is nice, clean driving. This is what we like to see in the Misfits Racing. It's Krampy and Dark going three wide. Oh! And Dark spinning. Oh no. Dark, rest in peace, Dark. He's just out of here. What has happened to these drivers? It's Edu trying to push through as well. A little bit of wheel banging. Those of don't want to give up the place, but I think he have to give up because those mediums are way better. Ooh. And Dark's back. Looks, is he going to spin from that? He's going to clip the Red Bull as well of Artex. Oh, is that damage for these two drivers? Oh, and he's uh, just collecting don't... everyone else. These drivers need to be careful before these uh, they cause more collisions. Yeah, and the Williams coming up top with the five, six positions. That was not not such good racing. As Edu got a penalty, I think he got pushed off to be fair. But our top five now going side by side again. As <laughs> Gavizum are just watching these two dancing, but I think now he's going to join into the fun. 
as Jose Manuel goes through on Ifon and Gabizum just eyeing up on a move. He's, he's trying as Ifon spins. What's no, happening? No, not Ifon. <laughs> oh, well, we had our action here. And now the action must come to an end, but the drivers are still racing hard. Jose Manuel it's, and Gabe Zim are still in the front. It's lap 14, everything just unfolded. We had two spins, actually three with the two Alfa Romeo, or one of the Alfa Romeos and the Red Bull, and now the Aston Martin spinning. Wow. Yeah, it's unfortunate to see those two best friends colliding. And now it's all in the mixed order right now, but cramping EDU sticking together in this position, P5 and P6, but this is a dark day for the Haas team. Oh, I, I see what you did there, I see what you did now. <laughs> Very nice. As John have a spin! John spins oh, out! Oh no, no! No, not for John as well, he was looking really good! And we still have more action to unpack as uh, both of the Mercedes drivers are really close as well, and as the, uh, the Alfa Romeo drivers Artex looking for that overtake as well. Uh, disaster going a bit wide, but the hards now are slowly uh, are submitting to the new medium runners. Is Artex going to go for the overtake? He's very low in ERS. Doesn't look like he can he, go pass through. He's, he's going to try to send it, but he he couldn't. He backs out. That's the better thing to do with that. That's all. Oh, oh is, no, that's that. What's happening? Oh no, no! <laughs> what happened here? One second, I'm not looking, and then I just see another second. Alpha in, two laps, into the lost, wall. in two laps, you had five spins. What's happening? Everyone's unfolding right now. These tires, all the drivers got a message saying, you know what? I'm not playing around anymore. It's time to go, go, go. And does that start have damage as well? It's driving is speeding. Yeah, I thought there is action already, but Gabizum is eyeing up a move on Jose Manuel. Does he have that speed to carry through? He's not utilizing his battery right now. It doesn't look like he's gonna go for the move. He's gonna wait for that DRS to quickly get side by side with him. But Jose Manuel does have a 70% ERS. But I have a question to ask, where is the rain? I'm not sure. I I, I think it's coming, but maybe it's not gonna be soon enough because I see a lot of people pitting for new tires already. I mean the people who didn't pit yet. There's only and 10 and a half laps left, which is enough for the softs to make it to the end, so these drivers need to pray for the rain to come soon. Yeah, and Gabizum goes through for first place in the race. Gabizum takes the oh. lead, but he still needs to pit uh, if the rain doesn't come in time. I lost timetable, I think. I'm not sure if you I lost that as well, I was a bit confused what That's happened there. This and Artex going side by side now. I have no idea what happened to my leaderboard there, but still looking through those actions right now. See the minimap, the gaps, if you can uh, slowly get through. We can see the intervals coming now. Okay. Artex, Artex is trying to make. Yeah, Art they are dancing. They are they slowly both dancing right now. There are uh, Artex is low on the ERS, while Wisp is also low on the ERX. They keep fighting, they're gonna allow Maka to slowly gain on them. As Jose and Manuel, Jose actually going for the pits and uh, Ifun as well. And Gabizum staying out on those hearts. I think Gabizum is gonna try to stick it till the rain. I wouldn't be surprised. He seems pretty committed. And he has almost 6 seconds gap to Krampi. So that's actually not that gap. If he can make that gap last until the rain. We have Dark right coming. now going for that overtake into turn 1. Is he going to stick it through? They're all going side by side to turn 1, turn 2. Is he going to clip it? Ooh, and nearly taking out Carbon Racer in the process. He's going to have to go off track a little bit. Is he going to get a penalty for that? Doesn't look like it. That's uh, nice catch. A, bit, a bit of action. Yeah, nice catch from Carbon Racer. Is he going to get it back in the DRS straight though? You're going to see it now. But it seems like he's under single, so he might have damage. That was a pretty minutes. big hit right now, but he does have DRS. Dark doesn't have that. He's not utilizing his battery that much. But is that speed difference going to be enough for him to eye for the overtake? He's looking in the inside. Is he going to do it? No, he's not. He's going to play safe. He's going to, you know what? Maybe he has damage. Maybe he's playing safe. But is he going to Is he going to get the better XR? He's going to yeah, he has more battery than Dark now. So he's going to just utilize that battery and just go through, I think, here. That is nice moves. Is he gonna stick it through? They're still going side by side. A little tap from him. Nice catch from Dark. But Carbon Racer leaving enough space as he can, and that's a good move from Carbon. 
Battle Racing, that's what we like to see. And Jose Manuel is actually P11 with his strategy, so he's not looking too bad actually here. Looking to the points, we can actually see the uh, position changes um, from these drivers. The Jose Manuel is still in the same qualifying position, but he is on the softs and he's quickly moving about for that overtake. Oh, and he made it through in the last corner, what a dive from, from Jose Manuel, and he's going to get that DRS and he's just going to go through. I think we're going to see some banging laps from him on those soft tires. Maybe even the fastest lap of the race. I won't be surprised if he does that. But these gaps are getting closer and closer. As we have Maka only two tenths away from Whisper, and they're not even in the DRS straight yet. This driver is a little bit settling down now, as as the gaps are a little bit getting bigger because you know it's the middle of the race strategy. But Maka is going for an overtake on Whisper, and Whisper has no DRS, so he, nothing he can do here. And Maka goes through. Maka goes through easy. There's nothing Wisp could have done with that low ERS. Disaster taking the fastest lap of the race at 31.89. But that might be uh, might be quickly beaten by the fast soft runner of Jose Manuel. Yeah, and he's just cutting the gap down towards Jean. He caught two seconds on this lap, so I think Jean is in big trouble. He does not have DRS now, so he's gonna watch out for next lap to the DRS straight. Still waiting, Gabe is still waiting for the rain as he's on the 17 lap old hard tires. So you can see a little bit of graining there on the tires, but Crampy is slowly getting closer to him. He's only four seconds behind, and it's gonna, gonna slowly, slowly get faster and faster. And five minutes the rain in chat, we can see that if Gavizum can make this work, it would be a miracle. As Dark putting from his 12 laps of all soft mediums, and that's his second stop, so. Dark is not a believer in rain, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't look like the strategy is gonna work for him. But Jose Manuel, not surprised, taking the fastest lap of the 31.2. Definitely a respectable lap time in this race. But we have, right now, we have pretty close gaps, especially between Wisp and Maka. Maka just overtaking him. Uh, is he gonna take a DRS rate? The fuel icon is on yellow, so he does have low fuel on that car right now. I mean, Maka has still double of Wisp ERAS, so I'm not sure if he can do anything here. And he's way too far from that. But Maka needs to get in uh, Artex's DRS if he wants He wants to save that ERAS and he don't know where to overtake him by Wisp. Artex, even though being uh, uh, clipped from uh, one of the Alfa Romeos, he's still looking pretty good in this race. Yeah. As just go and the Zaster picks up three seconds both of them. Actually, let's let's see what is our penalty situation. Edu has eight seconds. I think he's sped into the pit lane. Most of us, most of the drivers have three seconds. And uh, if you won, the Zaster and Dark have six seconds of penalties. As but Edu dives into the pit lane, he is not a believer in rain as well. Yeah, oh, it I looks think like it tires. wasn't gonna happen. Yeah, those tires were definitely not gonna last. And, um, and driver DMB spun. Driver DMB speed. Oh, that's unfortunate for him. Oh, the Alpine boys spinning throughout the whole race, not looking good for them. Uh, yes. Cosa Manuel slowly getting close to the carbon racer, importantly, with those three lap old softs. But now that the, the tires are already this old, you can see them slowly deteriorating, slowly falling off the pace. Yeah, and uh, we have a lot of drivers spinning now, so... And Gavism still keeping the pace up in front, but Kramp is cutting gap, that gap down by two seconds a lot now. I think those hearts are, are, are at the end of the life cycle. Gavism is now praying for the rain guys to come, I think. Yeah, they're not believing in the strategy anymore. They said there were going to be rain, but where is it? It's going to be quite funny if we see the rain in the last couple of laps, because um, that's, that's just going to take them off, I believe, but... Yeah, it's just a dry race throughout the whole the whole thing. I mean, we have uh, Mr. Cody Lawrence in chat believing it's gonna rain, it's gonna switch, so you should stay out. I think Gabism is praying with with him at the moment. Gabby isn't keeping faith in that strategy, but Crampy is 2.6 seconds behind him. Wisp is taking up a 3 second penalty, unfortunate for the hard running Alfa Romeo. Keeping the Alfa Romeo dream alive as his teammate is in pit 15 right now. And he's really close to Maka actually. He's only half a second and Maka does not have DRS at the moment. So I think this is going to try to make a move. 
you need to try to make a move as soon as you can because Maka is now in the DRS range depending on how he does his turn 1 right now. Artax actually low on ERS right now. Yeah, Artax is not managing the DRS too well at the moment. And I think his tires are falling off as well as we see Maka have one like, or the uh, younger tires. That helps as well, I, I think. And I believe and Maka does pick up the DRS range, which is, I think he will be happy with that. Let's see if he comes got that DRS activation zone. Yes, he will. Manga, Jose Manuel is behind Carbon Racer now, but he's eyeing up a move. Jose Manuel is just coming back at this race. He's now P he's fighting for P6 now. Wouldn't be surprised if we can easily pass him with those soft tires. He's looking very competitive. He used to be P11, now he's all of a sudden in P6. And the gap uh, to P5 right now is 5 seconds. I won't be surprised if that gap gets shorter shorter. But Domi, look at the sky right now. It's, it's, it's getting, getting darker. darker. Yeah, it's getting darker and darker. Wisp and Maka going side by side right now. Going through those tricky fast corners right now. I'm going to be surprised if I see Rain in the next lap right now. Because this is going to be very interesting for to watch. Just diving down inside of Maka and tapping Maka Ooh. and almost spinning but well had from Wisp as they're still going side still by side. Going side by side. They're glued together to each other's gearbox right now. They're leaving enough space, still going side by side, going through the last turns. It's, Is it still going to stick it through? Spin. Wisp getting an oversteering moment, almost spins but he catches it luckily and now they're gonna have a, he's going to have another chance to eye up that move. They're both on similar ERS right now, but Maka does have that ERS advantage for a little bit. But importantly, he's not in the DRS range. Yeah, I think Wisp can make a move here because Maka does not have DRS as you said. But Wisp is only 15% ERS, so I'm not sure if he's going to be enough, but let's see how much Maka have. Yeah, he's going to be enough, I think, because yeah, they are pretty close. Zedu says the faster lap on those new soft tires. And I see and Dribble rain right now, I see the rain coming through. Give him his probably like, yo, 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 this is, he's hyping right now. Yeah, he needs to defend from Campy as this goes through on Maka. And the rain is started to come down and Gabby's on prayers come, they finally come. I, I think, I think he's in the car now thinking, okay, calm down, we can win this. And, he needs uh, to defend from Crampy as much as he can. And if, he's, if, he, if he gets his strategy through, he can definitely look at the podium positions because all the drivers are going to have to come to pit. And if he plays if he pits in the perfect the time. Spin. Yeah, he needs to pit in the perfect for... time. I'm not sure if he's, if this is the lap or the next lap, but I think it's the next lap. Because... As Gabizum pitting! Gabizum is pitting already. He's gambling again. Yasko is, has already pitted for those intermediate tires. And if we look at him, he is sliding throughout early. all the place. Yeah, we can yeah, look I at him right now. Early. DRS is still active, so it, I don't think it was the right time, but Gabizum gambled once, he gambled twice, so we don't know, we don't know. He, it's probably, this stuff. he probably knew that he was gonna, he can't hold off Crampy any longer, and he's like, you know what, I'd rather gamble it. But let's go yeah, on but... board with Gabizum right now, going out on track with those intermediate tires. He's gonna have a cold for a couple of uh, sectors, but he's gonna have to warm it up nicely. As we have two drivers out there right now with intermediate tires. Maka's, uh, Maka and Wisp. Wisp actually importantly is being in front of uh, Maka right now. I didn't catch that up. Uh, he overtook him in the last lap, but Dires is still outing. I think I think he went in too early. I think that was too early. Maybe one well, area is falling down at the order, but if he doesn't lose too much time, maybe he can get still a podium. But I don't. I'm not sure if he can get the win. Yeah, we just yeah, saw uh, uh, EDU overtaking him, his driver DMV over also overtaking him, so doesn't look good. Uh, the strategy didn't really work out for him. He had the perfect opportunity, but I don't know. The race is still not over. There's still five laps. Everyone the, probably are gonna gonna have to pit soon. Yeah, one more lap. I think he needed to stay one more lap, and it would have been perfect because now the drivers start to struggle on those tires. But how but, fast is the rain coming through? We can see the rain is coming quickly and quickly, but DRS is still enabled. As well as the spin Campbell from is. Carbon Racer, has he spun out? Yes, he has spun out a little bit. Looks like the rain is actually getting to these drivers right now. Or just the oil tires, because he has 16 laps of tires. And as if on pitting, I think it's still another time, because we still have DRS. DRS what is a still active, but it is getting really slippery for those uh, soft run, uh, for those dry runners right now. 
Let's see, let's stick on board with Gabesman right now with the intermediate tires. Let's see if this, he has any pace advantage. The next uh, driver in front of him has 2.2 oh, seconds. Oh, he's struggling. He's struggling. It was not the right call. He, should, he had to stay out one or more two laps. He could have definitely stayed out a couple more laps because it's definitely a bit too slippery. But DRS is still enabled. Game says it's still. I think uh, it's going to be this lap. It's going to be this lap, probably. Because the truck is getting better now. And. Uh, Fuel the fire, get, Gabzian gets a three second penalty, so it's looking highly unlikely for him to win the race or even get a podium. But points are still up for grabs for this driver. Yeah, I think he drove a heroic race on those lab, on those tiny laps out tires, so we have to give him a huge credit. And Wisp, who went for those hearts, is actually gaining on Artax now, so. Already four times behind him, you can see like Gab getting closer and closer. But again, yeah, the rain is falling on really quickly here. I feel like the DRS is going to get disabled any second now. Yeah, and another thing if you think about it, who is going to gamble to stay out? Because it's only three laps now. It's only three laps, and if you stay out, you might win the race because of that. As well as going pitting. to the pits and Crampy going to the pits right now, they feel like, you know what, I can't drive in these positions anymore. I'm going to go for the, uh, the gamble, go for the intermediates. I, I still believe that it's still dry enough for another lap. Yeah, but maybe maybe this lap is going to switch, so you ne you never know, and those tires are really odd. But Gabizum is still losing time on those inters, so I'm not sure what's what's a good choice, but half of the grid went for, for inters, so probably that's the better idea. Yeah, the gap is see. getting bigger and bigger with Gabzium, we can use him as a reference, but everyone's paying right now, it's actually, it'll be interesting to see where the order is going to stack up. Crampy is still most likely going to be in provisional P1. But there's only three laps left. Artex might take the win if he sticks through the race, and because um, there's a 16-second gap, Artex might win this race. Yeah, and Jose Manuel is looking good as well. But the gap is. I'm watching gap to cramp it to Jose Manuel, and it's not coming down at the moment. It's actually going up. Yeah, it's actually going up. So these two, these two runners are actually looking really, really good for a podium right now. Yeah, it's 16 seconds, so if it's come down at the end of the race in the last two laps, maybe they can stay out and, and just... Oh, now it's coming down. Now it's started to come down. Look it's, at the time. It's, it's just keeping it steady. I don't know what to... I don't know what to think right now. These Ar Artex and Jose Manuel, they're gambling. Uh, they're not gambling, but they're keeping it nice and cool. They're looking at As the gap. David Anthony had a spin. Jose Manuel looking a bit shaky there, going a bit off. But the DRS disabled. is finally this is the disabled. This is the time to pit in. But if I was Artex or House Emmanuel, I would have stayed out. Artex, Artex is, is going to the pits right now. I don't know if that was and a Emmanuel is gambling. He is gambling. He's gonna try to stick it till the end. He has two laps. Crampy have two laps to gain. 15 seconds on Jose Emmanuel. I want to see one but second Jose already gained up. Jose Emmanuel, he can win this race, but I don't you have know. to count in the penalties. You have to count. He has three seconds. Jose Emmanuel have three seconds. He does have three seconds, but Crampy is 20 seconds. Wait, is he 20 seconds? Yeah, he is. Or, or Artex is going to the pits right now. Let's see where that gap is when he uh, comes in front of him. So he has 30, 30 seconds. seconds behind Jose Manuel, and there's only it, two laps left. He needs to catch 10 seconds, that means. And Artex comes out and P5 behind Maka. So Artex lost a huge amount of time with that. But Maka, starting from P7, and he's. And Kirby gets right a 3 second penalty. He now needs to get it on track. That's actually so bad for Crampy now. Oh! Actually... Sorry I'm about that, crazy. but it looks like Crampy is getting spinny and spinny. This is looking really likely to towards Emmanuel uh, to get the win race, but... Don't jinx him, Psycho. Don't jinx him, because you never know. It's scary. The gap is coming down so much now. And the truck is wet. This truck is wet. It's not good for uh, slick tires. He needs to keep it on the track. And Crampy needs to overtake him, but the gap is coming down very quickly yeah he still he still has an eight second gap i just you look away for one second and the one second gap is already cleared off crampy needs to quickly go and overtake uh jose manuel but maka is still in the contention for podium positions as he doesn't have any penalties uh this might look a really good race for for maka and the mercedes but crampy he needs to quickly uh, find the pace and overtake jose manuel but i won't be surprised if he does because the gap is getting shorter and shorter and he has still one lap. He gained over, a, I don't even know how much seconds he gained. He gained a lot. 
you see, just from that, just from that one turn, he already gained two seconds. So Jose Manuel and now is clearly struggling. Jose Manuel. Clearly struggling in this turn. Let's see how he navigates through turn one. Let's see if he's slidey or if it's too understeery. You can just see how understeer that is. He can just quickly overtake him. I think he's not gonna give it up that easily that you say. Ooh, and he's trying ooh. everything. He almost loses the cat. And he tries to push Cramp on track and get through zero. I don't think Jose Manuel can do anything, but he can still get points if he keeps it on track. In my opinion, because well I'm not sure. He can, the podium position is all uh, I think it's up to grab right now, but Maka right now, he's actually looking for a prime position. Uh, to even look for P2. Yeah, to even take P2 if you're looking for the leader uh, gap right now. He is As he's getting good, I hold him and Maka using his battery now. And Maka is having a double substream and he's gonna try to go down this inside, I think. As we go no, for the counters right now, Maka is 3.8 behind the Crampy. If he can somehow uh, take out a, a one second gap, no, he's never mind. He's in a 4.5 gap. It's highly unlikely. Wisp probably lifting there so he can. Uh, and Wisp is out. No, he's out of fuel. He's out he of fuel! Oh my god, what a, oh wow, what an unforeseen consequence we just saw from this race. I told you about the yellow icon popping on his, uh, on his, on his telemetry. And now you can see that's, oh, now you can see that's taking an action for Wisp right now. He's on low fuel mode. I think Max Connor as well. Uh, no, he's just on, on right tire still. Wow. Oh my as god, what a race, Jose Manuel. He's also on low fuel mode, I think. Wait, no, he's not. Never mind. But Wisp is on low fuel mode. Yeah, he's just on and the And the camp is gonna come to the line. As he wins the France GP, I think Maka is going to keep that P2. And Artex is going to get a P3. As Gavism just overtakes on the last corner, Jose Manuel. Oh, wow. wow. What, a, what a race for the Red Bull. 3-4 for the Red Bulls. But crampy winning the french grand prix i'm not surprised there there was so close on the last couple laps with the rain the rain just bring us so much action if you want action here you are you have found it the rain has blessed us with some more racing action yeah to our morale boys it, it was what a race i i can't even know what to say because you didn't know in the last i think on the, until the last lap that crampy is going to catch jose manuel it was not looking too bad for the Ferrari driver, but unfortunately it was one lap too early for the rain. I love this race. I absolutely enjoyed watching this race. What do you think, Domi? Uh, we had everything we want, honestly. So, yeah, it was it was nice to watch. As now our blast drivers are finishing the race. We have the but, three drivers coming in, Yasko and Master Connor. But And we have only one DNF. If you see. And we don't have we didn't have safety cars. We only had like five spins in lap 14 and 15 on those two laps, so... And that was a retirement on the pits as well, so... That was some but very good racing, I love to see that. Yeah, as uh, Max Econor crosses the line for finishing the last spins. Wow! It was dynamic race, for sure. We're gonna have interviews, I think, with our top three for... I, I think, I'm not sure. But yep. for a race by now. Yep, we can see if we can get the drivers in the commentator room. But uh, Crampy extending his championship lead is looking really good for him going on to the next race. Taking P1 as well as taking P1 in Singapore with that dominant race. Uh, it was looking a bit shaky, might have not had the win especially with that 3 second penalty and the gap. But the rain just kept on coming and coming as, as faster than we expected. So Crampy was not lucky but he definitely showed off uh, what he could do. So here we are, we have the finishing grid here. Crampy P1. P2 and P3 for Mac and Artex, driving for Mercedes and Red Bull. Red Bull having a good day, taking a good amount of points for the Red Bull team, P3 and P4 for Gabesium. We have P5 for Jose Manuel and P6 for Wisp. Wisp, uh, unfortunately, getting into no fuel mode. We have P7 for Carbon, unfortunate for him, starting on pole. The Foon on P8, P9 for Gian, Alphatari, and the P10 for Edu, Crampy's teammate. He was looking really good, but unfortunately, he could not deliver. Uh, that's your point scoring positions. We have driver D and B for Alpine. We have the Haas, uh, both of the Haas drivers in P12, P13. Unfortunate for them. Uh, P14 for back row. P15 for David Antonio. Uh, P16 for Disaster. 17 for Giasco. P18 for Max O'Connor. And the only DNF of this race, Lavelle retiring in the pits in P19. What a race. Yeah, what a race. Honestly, I don't know. Um... 
on speech rush at the one. I'm still trying to get the drivers in our interview room. But well, uh, so far, we only get one. We are getting the drivers into the interview room right now. Looks like we have... Okay. Yes, we have people waiting in the waiting room. Okay, so we start with P3. What do you think? Yep, let's start with P3. Okay, so we have our P3 driver with us. Uh, uh, how okay. was the race? Fantastic race, fantastic race. So, did you enjoy the race? Uh, tell us about your thoughts on the last laps, on, on fishing sprinters and, and everything, honestly. Yes, I switched sprinters in the last lap. I'm so the better of the world. Believe in the plan! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> oh. Okay, so that was our picture driver, Artex. Uh, uh, give me one second, you're kind of cutting up for me. Let me just quickly rejoin this voice channel. Alright, we should be all good now. Uh, that was an uh, interesting interview from our p3 finisher <laughs> yeah but uh he was excited about the race uh now coming up with um our p2 okay yeah i'm still going out so we're gonna wait for the interview a little bit mm -hmm. give me one second to there we are all right should be better so I think our P2 driver finisher, Maka, is coming up to do an interview with us. Uh, how did you feel? How was the race? How did you decide on strategy? And uh, yeah, tell us everything. Yeah, it was a very good race. I, it, was, it, was, it was quite stressful at the end with all the, uh, the rain coming in. I didn't, I didn't really want that to happen. You know, I was hoping it was there as it was. I was in a pretty good position anyway. But uh, yeah, it worked out. Uh, these guys helped a lot with the strategy and everything, and you know, not with the uh, engineer. So it was, it was, it was very good. Yeah, it's it's always good to hear. You guys had the great actually teamwork on the qualifying as well. When you when you give uh, yeah. Carbon Racer a toe, but well, it's unfortunate for him that he had uh, those two spins. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was interesting to see you guys went for the medium tires. Did you guys know for sure that the rain is gonna come? Uh. Yeah, we we did we saw the rain, but we weren't like hundred percent sure, especially with the other gamers, if we would actually get rain or how early it would come. So we decided to gamble and just go for the mediums, and it it turned out to work very well. So yeah, good drive from you. Anything to add, Psycho? Yeah, you had a great drive there, especially being consistent with uh, having no penalties. The the top runners had pay uh, had three second penalties, so good job on that. Um. So the next race is Spain, is a competitive track and also a hard track to get used to. How are you looking up for it? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully we can get some uh, some more big points and uh, uh, congrats to Grand Prix for the win. Yeah, thank you for the interview and uh, good job on the race. See you next time around. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So now our P1 finisher is coming up to our commentary booth. He's been here a lot of times, so... Yeah, welcome, Crampy. How was your race? Um, you almost didn't get that victory because of Jose Manila uh, gambling on those uh, souls, but you cut down the gap and overtook him. So tell us about your race a little bit. Uh, yeah, so with the, at the end, obviously, Jose Manuel gambled, worked very well with him. I think he did better off than what he did when he, if he would have hit for the inters. It's good for him. Good points. For his and him and his team, but then the whole race, I just at the start sat behind Carbon Racer, overtook when I needed to. Then I think him and Artex had a little coming together or something, and I was able to gap them, get away out of the DRS. Then yeah. after that, uh, the pit stops were pretty simple until I came across Dark. Then me, him, and Daz went free wide, and then I don't know what happened to him, but got told by him. Imagine it, that it was not my fault, it's the guy on the outside, so hope I'll be fine there. And then pretty much just drove away, conserving the mediums in case the rain didn't come, so that I wouldn't get a puncture. And then worked out pretty well with the inter strategy. Yeah, you did everything perfectly so far uh, in this season, and um, it it you got the big gap to, to P2 in the championship, so... How are you looking at that, and how are you looking for our next race? What is going to be Spain? Oh, well, obviously, it's 
good to have a bigger gap in the drivers' championship so that there's more room for me to throw the title completely. But uh, hopefully, I won't do that, and I'm able to close it out and try and win us the constructors' title as well. As I know that's pretty close between Williams and Mercedes, and uh, so yeah, I just got to finish off rounding up these titles. And what about Spain? I I don't have a clue. Um, to be honest, I haven't driven it much at all since the part uh, like the big patch where cars got slowed down and that. So we'll just have to see. Yeah, thank you for coming up and doing this interview. For a good job on the race, and hope you see you next time around here. Thank you. Bye. Yes. Uh, so that's, that's all the drivers else. done, and a lot of action to unpack there. What a race today we have. I can't wait for the next week for the Spain race, but everyone stick around. Um, we have the American Tier 1 race uh, uh, starting at 2 o'clock BST, 2 a.m. That is for the British viewers out there. So don't go anywhere. There's still more action that's left off for today. But Domi, thoughts on this race? Well, I never get any boring girl race than this one, so... <laughs> this is what you get yeah. for through the Misfits racing community. You know, we keep it nice and clean and always... Uh, have that action with us. Except lap 14 and 15. We just spin there, but uh, nothing <laughs> else. Oh, we, we had those two best friends in P1 and P2. That departure was kind of sad. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, I think we're going to grade someone, but I think we're just going to roll the outro now. And see you guys next time. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.